Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. Um, let me just, I guess, say we're live. Okay, <laughs> Discord's taken care of. <laughs> well, how's it going? Sorry, I haven't been able to 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 respond to the um, info you put in chat last week and then the messages earlier. Oh, don't worry about it. Um. I think, I think I'm good. Like, like um, a, couple a couple of weeks ago, I think I mentioned to you that I was targeting to get down to minus two in the logic games and try to be more consistent. consistent. I, I think, think that, that has happened. Okay. So that's, that's my impression, at least. At least. And um, yeah, I, think I think at this point, point I also noticed that I could improve further. And um, yeah, basically, basically keep on working for two more months and then basically. Um, Go beyond, beyond a 171, 171 score if that is possible. And, and I think that's what I'm trying, trying to do. Because um, I think it is possible. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I sent you this one test that I did, did where, where I noticed that, 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 that a lot of the mistakes I did were like not even because, because questions are difficult, but rather because, um, because of poor habits or imprecision or sloppiness. <laughs> Okay. So, so I've been, been wondering, wondering how to address that. that. That's one, one of the questions that I would like to ask you. So, so what, uh, what can I do to avoid unforced errors? How can I become... Yeah. Sorry, I'm just writing things down this time. Sure. sure. So, so how can, can I avoid these syllabus mistakes? And, and then also, um, basically, um, I have a lot of time for the next two months to devote really to this test. test. What would you say is the optimal strategy? How, how would you design, say, a study schedule if you had, like, um, complete freedom to do so and wanted to do so in the best possible way? Are you serious? Um, sorry, it's like it was an alarm going off for the call that I'm already in. It always pisses me off when it does that. Let me look over the email you sent to me real quick, or the message you sent to me yesterday. Yeah. I just want to review. Absolutely. An earlier part of the section. Care this too long anymore. How much time pressure are you feeling? Um, in the past, so over the last couple of weeks, I felt a lot of time pressure because I was focusing specifically on the April date. Yeah. And um, now I'm registered for June. So I think now I can, like, I want to keep working, but I don't. Oh, I mean, in terms of within each section. Oh. Right. So you mentioned here with the mistakes in allergy and RC that you were um, potentially too willing to move forward for the sake of speed. So I guess that's yeah. kind of what I'm getting at is like how much time pressure are you dealing with? Basically, Basically I'm, I'm trying, trying to follow a certain um, schedule for each section, say in logical, logical reasoning to complete the first 10 questions, questions in 10 minutes, then mm -hmm. um, also in reading really comprehension to do the first passage in like seven minutes or so. So, so I'm trying to set myself these um, these, these reference points, points just to um, avoid, avoid the situation, situation where I take, take too long early on and then have to rush later on. I think, I think sometimes it can go in the opposite uh, direction <laughs> rather than make these silly mistakes early on that are actually avoidable. Okay. So one of the general concepts I point out for error prevention is building speed on the parts where you're not going to make mistakes giving yourself and therefore giving yourself more time um, deeper in, you know, second, third, fourth paragraph, right? Um, or third passage, so on and so on. So potentially one way you could make fewer mistakes is actually try to speed up on the easy questions and slope down even more on the hard ones. So that's like one broad concept. Um, let me see. 
your your logic game notes completely now. Okay. I wanna. Hmm. Discipline and thoroughness and reading. Um. So one thing I could point out, and I think we've mentioned this before, is that I constantly reread things right mm -hmm. um almost compulsively so um but it ends up working out because i keep reaching that thoroughness another part of the idea i think is to have it's like the, it's developing the alarm bells in your head for when you feel uncomfortable at answering the question where you feel like you're not a hundred percent sure Right, and, and trigger that instinct to go and reread these parts, right? So I guess like it's like hard to say definitively how to cultivate something like that. But again, it's more of like paying attention to like how you feel on each question and like just how certain you feel about answers. Because I'm guessing that for these answers, you still didn't feel 100% certain. Um, I might be off base. Yeah, yeah I, think I think the. the how should I say this? I think, I think I rather went in the opposite direction, direction that, that I tried, that I, tried, I was overconfident, and then thought, like, like intuitively just treated these as easy things, things that are going to be right. Um, okay. Pretty much likely. And, and um, yeah, yeah, that the issue, issue was rather one of being too confident or too. Now, when you're doing the blind review, is that untimed? Yeah, yeah the, the second one? Yes. OK. Let's see. Questions 8 and 10 in logic games. So on an early, was that a particularly yeah. difficult logic game, or was that just like just errors, basically, as you've been describing? No, no that's, that's exactly, exactly what I've been describing. describing. That's yeah. not, actually, actually, not, not that, that difficult, difficult, and then um, Upon, Upon reviewing this, this I also thought, thought it's like, like a really silly mistake, mistake to make. And um... okay, what? Let's pop. I just want to pop those open real quick, and I'd like to just have you describe the specific ma uh, uh, mistake that was made in terms of like misreading the stimulus versus you know misunderstanding the meaning of certain things. Um, so let me see. This was seventy-eight two. Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Section two. Just add seventy minutes. So we're not rushing. Okay, start us. Um. I'm there. Okay, so let's go to those two questions. Those what? Eight and ten. Mm -hmm. Okay, why can't I see that? There we go. So it could be a specific could be true, and another could be true. So yeah, describe what happened here. Was it misunderstanding or misapplying a rule? So what, what I typically, typically try to do is to um, write down. A Possible, possible rules early, early in the game. game. Yeah. And, and here, here I didn't do that. Um, I rather went, went on a question based approach, approach addressing question to question individually. Okay. And, and I, I think, think in question eight, eight I, I, I somehow misdrew the scenario. scenario. Um, I, I then went, went back to like making the possible rules later on, but that was in the middle of the game, and then I hadn't. Available it at the start. start. And then okay. why did you decide to do the question by question approach this time? Basically for yeah, yeah I, I think, think for optimizing, optimizing speed is maybe, maybe I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure it was like a super, super conscious decision. decision. I think it's rather like a lapse in discipline or um, I 
So part of the difficulty, right, in in figuring out error prevention is that mm-hmm. it's not just one thing, you know? Um, and it's important to, like, try and dive down and be as specific as possible in what's causing the errors, right? And so here you sort of changed your approach, and that sort of, like, you know, just led to a lack of clarity on this one and a mistaken startup or setup. Mm-hmm. So... What specifically did you not do correctly here? Setting, Setting up a, a um, possible rule that... Let me go, go back, back to, to the, the question. question. Actually, question eight is... Yeah, and I'll right. open up the... Um, I'm going to open up your notes, too, on my screen so I can just review those again. Yeah. yeah. So actually, actually, even the, the scenario, scenario I drew is, is correct. Okay. I. So, so the, the scenario, scenario I drew is actually not false. false. It's rather. I must, I must have gotten confused with it could be true because, because I selected. I selected, I selected an answer, answer choice where I can see even on my own diagram, diagram that it's not the right answer. answer. So, so the diagram is correct, correct but then doubled the wrong answer, answer choice in the okay. test. Okay, so that's probably more a, a, a part of slowing down and or rereading that question stem one last time before you settle, like you choose a definitive answer. Um, yeah. Both of those are good things to do. I don't know if you're constant, if you reread the question stem before you make a final selection, but that's one of my habits. Like I just reread it one more time, make sure I'm answering the thing I'm supposed to be answering. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about question 10. Is it sort of the same thing here? Let me see. So why is not assigned? I'm actually, actually not, not even sure what it's here, here anymore. Like, like I, I don't, don't see this, this in my notes. notes. Okay. Well, let me see again. It says you spent almost two minutes on this one, one minute, 55 seconds. So you definitely were pondering it for a fair bet. Yeah. It was interesting. I, I like, I like, I always like in out <laughs> sort of like sequential yeah. ones, although this is Onyx must be a sign of the year. There's actually only a single... Interesting. There's only a single rule relating to, like, linearness or sequencing. Mm-hmm. Everything else feels like group rules. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, honestly not sure what I did there. Like, like I, I see that I created a lot of scenarios and crossed them out again. Okay. I think, I think it must have, have been related to this. this. So, so I must have, have been trying to brute force my way through this, this I assume. assume. Okay. But I, yeah. So let me check. Did you have any complete correct boards prior to that? No, no and I, I think, think that, that that's, that's the most. Or like I had like, like question H. That's right. And that one does not involve <clears throat> Yoshio. It's always hard for me to read other people's notes. Uh, well, well, actually, actually, I could have solved it. Like, like I think, okay. like based on my notes on question eight, I see that E could have been possible. Okay. Yeah. So, so I had the right, right diagram for eight, but, but I entered it wrong. And then for question ten, I didn't reconsider that diagram. I rather created all of these new little sub game boards and then failed to synthesize that information. Okay. So, right, like one of the possible concepts here is to just be checking back to your previous diagrams more. Um, and you know that I love doing that. I, I live off of my previous diagrams. Um, <clears throat> I guess I would want to know why you like went into the hard solve, right? 
Mm. Yeah, so I think, right, it's, you went into the hard solve because you didn't check the, the prior board to see if it already included this information with Yoshio or could be easily swapped to achieve the outcome here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those are kind of the what I, what sticks out to me is potential ways to improve process here. Yeah, you, you work with prior game boards, and also just just, just this very basic, basic thing that I try to do anyway to set up as much as possible, much as possible early on would have made it possible to answer this question. Yeah, so sure. I think it's, it's a lapse in discipline. That's in... Okay, so solvable. Exactly, it's, it's these silly mistakes, mistakes and that's why that's why I keep, keep getting frustrated that. that I see, I see that these things that I keep making wrong, they're actually, actually very solvable. And the, the very fact that I'm having to solve them, that's what, was what I found frustrating. Right. Yeah, of course it's frustrating. Every time, like, committing errors is always really, really frustrating, right? Um, this makes total sense. Um, let me ask, I have this, like, it's like a sort of weird but broad question. Mm -hmm. um, and it may be that like you just don't have a clear idea of this yet, but are you the sort of person that becomes more relaxed under pressure or less relaxed? So for instance, if you met me in person, I'm pretty shy at first, but if mm -hmm. you drop me into a courtroom and have me speak in, in front of a bunch of people, I'm calm. I, I'm just ice. I'm calm for some reason. The more people and the more big the situation is, the less I get anxious and freak out, and the more I'm just like in the zone. Mm -hmm. So, how do you feel about that? Just like in terms of yourself? Well, good, good question. So, so am I am I more relaxed when when I think there's no pressure, or am I more relaxed when I think there is pressure? Yeah, basically, like, do you get more calm the bigger the situation gets? Because that would describe me. I'm a little bit neurotic in everyday life, but speeches, court, all of those things, just ice cold. Like, I prefer to be in those situations, honestly. Mm hmm. Probably one of the reasons I want to do a Twitch stream and YouTube videos. <laughs> but the reason I ask is because knowing that about yourself is emotionally important to provoking the best possible performance you could have, mm -hmm. right? I, right, chess, standardized test, right? I sit down and I'm in the flow, right? Because I like that it's an intense competition. Like that spurs me to do better and to be, I guess, more methodical too. On the mm. other hand, right, if you're someone that tends to, to react negatively to like stress being piled upon you or intense situations, right, it's important to emotionally and mentally play down the intensity of the situation, right? And, and maybe that helps you feel more comfortable, you can stay more disciplined, right? Like, because you're not the sort of person that usually loses their discipline on their own, right? It's probably something is, throwing you off, something like that. That's just like my general thought process mm. here. So I would reflect on that and, and, you know, to some degree, like work on cultivating a specific emotional state, right? When you're taking uh, PPs. Work on cultivating. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've certainly, certainly noticed, noticed when, when I redo all the tests, I'm much, much more relaxed, relaxed and um, I think, yeah, yeah that, that also makes me less prone to make these stress choices. Yeah, well, your blind reviews feel... are always in the high 170s, which shows when there's less pressure, you're clearly knocking this stuff out. Yeah, yeah. so, so I, I think, think a lot of this happens with automatisms that maybe my automatisms are not strong enough yet. And yeah. then also, um, like maybe, maybe just rest. Like, like when I was targeting the April date, I, I didn't take a lot of rest. And I think that, uh, yeah, that, that makes me more prone to making these, um, mistakes under pressure. This being 
and improperly rested. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's the same concept as driving while tired, right? Like it's, it's, and like to some degree, or once you get a, past a certain point, it's actually more dangerous than being drunk, right? Fatigue, tiredness, just, yeah. Burnout can definitely affect performance, 100%. Take a few days off. Let me, I'm trying to write down everything we've talked about. So cultivating an emotional state. Mm -hmm. and hopefully that helps like maintain discipline. Yeah. It's, it's funny, funny that you say, say that, like I haven't taken a day off back from work stuff for like, like several months at least. And so, um, that's not healthy, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just not like as as a former attorney, I can guarantee that's not healthy, and you definitely shouldn't let people push you into doing that when yeah. you pr start practicing law because they will. Um, yeah. yeah, avoiding burnout is wildly important to like long term success. Um, yeah, that's why I've been thinking about this long term strategy thing. That maybe a shift in my approach that I should do is to only work on the outside like six days a week as opposed to seven. Yeah, I agree. Having a rest day every week is not bad. And, you know, you can always, like, if you can find the time, you could always allocate those lost hours to other days, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I would, I think that's a better idea, working a little bit longer on those six days and taking a full day off. I think that's definitely preferable. Um, I can tell you, like, during the intense season leading up to each exam, right? Um, at a certain point, like I, I think last time I worked for the January exam, I know I worked 22 days in a row leading up to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I was burnt out. Like it was a lot of teaching. Um, and I took, and I like just took two days. I, I like marked out my schedule. I'm like, I, I just need two complete days off. And I felt a lot better coming back, a lot more focused. And I think I was like ready to start the new cycle. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's one thing I noticed like in the past. past. Um, when, when I was, I was less, less consistent, consistent in doing um, all of this practice, yeah. I had uh, more, more fluctuations, but, but then sometimes I also had scores that are really, really good and I was better than where I am now. Like, like I had some 175s. Yeah. But, but then, then these occurred not in the sort of um, stringent setting, but more these up and down. Um, yeah. Mm. Variability. Yeah. yeah. When, when I, had I had more variation, variation I had. More, more bad results, results but also more good results, results and now i'm kind of stable in the middle right. which in a way is good but i would like to have that stability on a higher level <laughs> yeah but at least you play yeah i still think like i think that's a good progress progress though like getting yourself to be more consistent like even if you were scoring at a 175 level if you had a plus or minus six variance Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can still score 169, but if you're at a 172 with a two-point variance, that's, that feels a little bit safer. Yeah. Um, okay, so yes. I think what is... So I'd, sorry. So I'd like to cultivate the sort of long-term strategy that I can get good results, but can also be consistent and... Um, yeah. So let's talk so. about study schedule, too. So you mentioned that. Okay. So, like I said, I think one part of, of improving now is actually just reading faster, moving faster, being decisive on easier questions, mm -hmm. right? And I'm just like trying to think about how to specifically study that. And I guess to some degree, it's like outside the PTs when you're practicing, push yourself to be even faster with the first hand. Right, like see if you can get it down to eight minutes instead of 10. Right, mm -hmm. that's, that's a lot of extra time um, to allocate elsewhere. Same with the first game in the section, right? Can you get that done even faster? So like, um, let me look at this one too. Four and a half, five and a half, six, seven, seven and a half, two, no, eight and a half, 11 minutes. I think on the first, no, 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 that's wrong. That's wrong. Game. Oh, it doesn't divide it up by game. It just says in a row. Um, so on the first five questions. Okay, sorry. 
two, four and a half, five and a half, six, um, seven minutes. So yeah, and it's not terrible for the first game. Not definitely not at all. Actually, seven minutes is good. Um, but again, like maybe that's something you can push a little faster. Like I also noticed here that it seemed like you were blazing in the third game, mm -hmm. um, for the most part, and had no misses. Um. <clears throat> So yeah, I guess part of it is just like when you feel like you've hit a game that you know you can smash right to pieces, that's when to speed up, right? Just kind of like sensing I can knock this one out really quick. I can feel super confident moving through it. So maybe to some degree start drilling like beginner games and beginner questions and just pushing yourself to finish faster and faster, right? Build mm -hmm. that extra time. Um, so practice, practice easy, easy games, games and focus, focus on... on speech yeah I, uh, optimization. optimization yeah and then once you feel like you've milked a bunch of gains out of that see if you can do the same thing for intermediates right just move mm. upwards any t any chance you have to build extra to bank time for the hard ones is great always great Okay, so study schedule overall. Like, that's one specific piece I think it would definitely be worth adding. Um, yeah. Like, I have about 12 new PTs left, and apart from that, I did pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the, maybe think, that's okay. Think... Like, go back to the very earliest PTs you did and start just drilling the, the beginner ones. Because the beginner ones are also the ones that are most forgettable, right? <laughs> like, because it doesn't mm -hmm. take you long. It's not something you agonize over. So it's just kind of in and out of your memory. Yeah, so, so in terms of scheduling, I thought I should do maybe one new test a week, but, but then otherwise really limit how much new material I burn through. Because otherwise, I just won't have like a reliable indicator anymore as to where I'm at. Yeah, I agree completely with that. Um, definitely like just save up your tests, do them leading up the test. Yeah, so that would be what, eight leading up to the next exam, and then you've got a few more that you can toss in towards the end, or like week, week and a half before. Yeah. Um, and then I, I can also really, I can also really <clears throat> focus in depth on the mistakes that I keep making, because I if I only make like five mistakes a test, then I can really examine those in detail and then yeah. really try to minimize um, the things that keep repeating. Yeah. I agree with all of that. I think that's a good study structure. So yeah, I think we, the goal here is we need to find valuable exercises for you to do without breaking new material. Mm -hmm. So I think the reading comp exercises are potentially good. Although if I think it's like for you, it's, oh, you aced this reading comp. I thought you said that you made some errors on this one. Oh, the first question. Yeah. Oof, that's frustrating. Otherwise perfect. Okay, well, I assume that was a main point question, um, given that it's the first question. Uh, so, hmm. We could dive directly into that one too, but it feels like maybe that's a little less fruitful because we didn't have to read the whole passage. But I guess I would say is like, what error happened there, you think? Well, what I earlier really called a silly mistake. mistake. So it's another issue that. that yeah, this, this issue, issue that the question is not difficult, and that's rather something that I overlooked. Um, asked for a synonym. synonym. Okay, so it may have just been like a language issue too, or just some degree a language issue. It's, it's not, not even like a complicated language issue, it's just like I think carelessness on my part. Okay. And that's really something that, um, that made me think that I, if I could get these silly mistakes out of the way, I could, I could do much better in this. Oh, absolutely. I think you, you know, it looks like you've gotten at least four more correct just by correcting some, some definitely correctable errors. Yeah. Um, that's the problem. And I say definitely correctable, like I'm firmly of the opinion that like everyone scoring a 170 above can correct their errors. It's just really hard to figure, to identify the errors that yeah. need to be corrected and like what's causing them, you know? Um, and it changes yeah. among different sections, too. Um, so tell me about LR on this one. How'd that feel? Um, let, let me look, look at, at the things, things that I made. made. 
So, so there are two logical, logical reasoning things. things. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, like and the, the and one, one of them again has a very early question wrong, the second one, and then the seventh one. So, so it's again two, two completely correctable mistakes. mistakes. And, and that's, that's really why I um why I thought that um that speeding these up might not be immediately beneficial because that's already what I'm trying to do. Like I'm already trying to go fast here and that's then how these these issues creep in. So I'd rather I'd rather my intuition would rather be to go in the opposite direction to not try to make this even faster, but rather to avoid making the mistakes here. Because these, these are the things that I should be getting right. I think what I would say is to the extent you're practicing being fast, do it outside the actual PT. Right? Like follow what feels like the right pace once you're inside it. <clears throat> right? It's just like I think it's something for outside practice, but it as always, like when you're in the test, you just need to follow your flow. Um but okay. So yeah. Second question in one of the sections, eight and ten in another. Yeah, definitely some of the earlier questions too. And 23, 17, more advanced ones. Yeah. And, and I, I think, think here it might, might be helpful, helpful to really read this multiple times and to um to really get at the details because I think that's what I overlooked here in part. Yeah. So what I would like you to do for when you do practice LR sections this week, as soon as you score it and you hit a missed answer, stop and immediately write down an answer journal for that. Uh, try to remember what you were doing five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago when you first started the section and write it out on paper. Um, that way it's as fresh in your mind as possible. But you're still being time efficient, right? Like one of the problems with doing a, a blind review where you have a full question journal for each question is that it's insanely time consuming to do that. But here, right, the idea is just as soon as you know that you've missed it, while it's still as fresh in your mind as possible, write everything you can out. Yeah, what you were looking at, what you missed, why you think you missed it, try to do it as in the moment as possible. Yeah. Okay. So, so whenever I make a mistake, write it down, down immediately. Yeah. Without doing these really long thorough reflections, but rather just write down what led to the mistake. Yeah. Try to describe what your thought process was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like the goal there is just to describe that in the moment decision making as best as possible. That way you can start consciously working on the very in the moment decision making. Okay. Yeah. I think that would definitely be useful. Um, trying to think of other things, immediate answer journal, speed practice, not on PTs, only in, un only in like unimportant sections and basically just do it for the first 10 questions only. Yeah. Um, immediate answer journal, that'll help a lot with like immediate self-reflection. Um, right, we said like, to the extent it's like misreading a stimulus or misreading prompts, right? Try to train yourself to be more disciplined. Um, and part of that might be just making an extra five seconds at the end to verify things, um, that your answer is responsive. Um, yeah, I don't know how much to offer in reading comp at this point. I think we see like how the next PT goes and see if any more mm -hmm. issues pop up. But it feels like you're really, really great at it. It's just like that one error and you would have had a perfect score on this one. Um, so substantively, I don't know how much there is to dive into that right now. And to some degree, you may want to like deprioritize reading comp a little bit, like still practice, but, you know, drop a few of those practices in favor of, um, you know, the, the LR practice maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so focus on LR and LG. <clears throat> Any other big thoughts about takeaways for training right now? 
Yeah, if you start to feel icky about reading comp, especially structural questions, I would say try the um, headers practice again. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it doesn't seem like that's a, you know, it's just like a good way to practice, especially when you have no new materials left, right? It's something you can do and it's like okay and still really helpful to do with old materials. Yeah. Also I like, think, okay. I think, I think reading comp is actually the, the section, section where I have the most unused, unused material left because, because I, Never okay. really made that a priority. It just came more natural to me. Yeah, it just felt good all along. Yeah. And Honestly, then... that's really impressive for a non-native speaker. <laughs> like, Thanks. like real, like to be acing reading comp like that. That is rare. Uh, yeah, and really, the only times you miss things are when a word that you don't know yet is used. Uh, Can I actually <laughs> ask a question about that? Yeah. Like, like, I have a really, really old GIE exam, the graduate record examination. Yeah. And they extended its validity to five years because of COVID. So, so for this application cycle, it would actually be still valid. And okay. the pattern there is essentially identical. Like, I'm very good in the reading section. It also has a reading section. Yeah. But I'm pretty bad in this mathematical thing. So basically, it's like four years old, but the, the patterns are almost identical. And, and I've been wondering, wondering whether I should try to use that in some form. Like, um, do you... I would definitely include it um, in the application process and maybe, you know, to some degree highlight it. What were you considering? Well, yeah, you're in grad school. So it's like, you had a valid use for the GRE. I don't see any reason not to consider it. And I don't see any reason to not emphasize maybe in your personal statement or like a follow-up letter. But like, mm -hmm. I don't know, writing and language are like clearly your passions and what you're extraordinarily good at. And you really want to like, you know, as evidenced by the LSAT and the GRE. And then like, that's really why I want to go to law school. Just like big picture. I think that's a thing you mm -hmm. can definitely work at. Yeah. Um, just to emphasize like you're naturally talented in this area slash you've really developed great skills in this area already. Yeah. yeah. Um, definitely useful. Um, yeah, so I've been talking about that because, because like this old exam, it really reveals, I think, that I'm good at reading, but also really reveals that I can be pretty bad at this calculative stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was it. the exact same for me when I took the GRE like a decade ago. I was considering like mm -hmm. law school versus other grad schools. Um, but yeah, I think I was like 120 points higher on my verbal than I was on the math. <laughs> it's just like a mm -hmm. massive gap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so I've been thinking, it, like, okay, yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe I, I can include it somehow, but I want to make the I'll set my main application um, basis. I know a lot of schools accept GRE scores, like, and some mm -hmm. say, like, in lieu of LSAT, but, like, obviously they're lying. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, you can definitely submit both along with your application. At least for a lot of schools, you're going to have an option to submit both automatically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there seems to be a lot of a lot less data on GRE scores for law schools at least, yeah. or um, they, don't, they don't seem to track the results, uh, possibly because they get so few of them. But there's very little in terms of um, what people consider like um, the baseline score or the median. That has provoked an interesting thought in me, which is if you have incredible softs. And, like, you don't think you'll do great on the LSAT? Maybe mm -hmm. you submit just a GRE because them admitting you doesn't affect their medians, right, mm -hmm. for the LSAT because you didn't take it. So maybe that's, like, a good way to backdoor yourself into a high-ranking school, right? Um, is it even if, like, you have a lower GPA because at least you're not, like, messing with their other median at all. Huh. Yeah. 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 So I have that as a as a backup plan, I think, because for this cycle it is still valid, but the next year it not, would not be it would just be too old. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if I re retook the GRE now, I would score like three hundred points lower on that. <laughs> yeah. It's like those skills have absolutely deteriorated since since college. That, that requires, requires you to memorize a lot more, like, like you need to memorize mathematical stuff. It's essentially high school, but I think it's less skill-based and it involves more memory. 
Yeah. I'm sure I could rebuild it if I wanted to. Maybe I'll go to grad school. I was thinking about getting a master's in library administration, becoming a law librarian. Mm. It's not a bad job. Uh, you get paid a lot. <laughs> and um, I don't know. You don't really work for anyone, which is nice. Um, you just have, like, attorneys that you help. I don't know. Anyways, um, let's dive back in. So yep. I don't know if you're following sort of, like, tracking the stuff on Reddit. Um, but it sounds very much like there is a circle game, um, in this past exam. So I just wanted, we, you know, we could do a circle game together or just like, I wanted to emphasize that those are definitely worth covering a second time. Um, yeah. basically all of the rare games. It seems like they're like using about one rare game in each exam right now. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. So that was just something I wanted to advise you of. And then, um. So I guess the, the question is, like, what do you want to follow up on now? Should we just keep talking more about study process? Or um, should we dive into anything specifically? Let me offer one thing. Um, but I'm just going to, it's something I'm working on um, for my most recent. Um, I don't know. Where is that? It's just something I've been working on related to strength and weekends. Let me share it on our screen. Right, and this is also maybe not a bad process yourself. And by that I mean like writing down what you're doing piece by piece as you go through a question, mm -hmm. right? So like this is like fully describing a sort of automatic process that I follow <clears throat> when I get strength and weekends. Um, I don't even think about it. This was hard to write because I had to deconstruct like what I do automatically now, mm -hmm. right? But it's like, follow that for yourself maybe as well. Um, so like I can see like piece by piece, I speed read for the conclusion. I first try to identify the strength of the conclusion, likely probably X will happen, A causes B, right? I try to just identify the keywords and the population groupings. So like the who and the what, I try to describe the conclusion like in a more fulsome way, um, causative, if then probabilistic. Obviously, there's like a whole way to describe these, but I feel like understanding each of these like intuitively is useful, like a cost benefit analysis. Like I know exactly like the stuff that relates to cost benefit analyses. Like there's a much more limited realm of errors or issues to strengthen weekend. Um, so yeah, identifying the type of conclusion is super important. I reread the prompt. I trace the keywords from the conclusion back to premises. Um, look for keywords, you know, scope shifts, that sort of thing. Evaluate whether this is a good argument. And you can see, like, I'm still not at reading the answer choices, right? There's a lot of, like, cerebral parts that go into it first. Yeah. Right? Stuff like bad arguments are almost always strengthened by an answer choice relating to the existing weaknesses. Good um, arguments are much more harder to like spot the strength in because it can come out of nowhere. Um, finally, get to answer choices. I just do eliminations. I'm not looking for the right answer. I'm just eliminating based on flaws. Compare and contrast what flaws are left. Compare and contrast the actual answer choice and then choose. Right. But studying your own process and attempting to write it down can actually be very valuable because it can show you where those like mistakes, those errors are creeping in, right? It's this gap between these two things and need to fix. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have some notes like this, but yours are by far more detailed than what I have. Yeah, well, I've been working on this one for a little bit. Um, like basically every time I work a strength and strengthen questions with someone i'm also like trying to write down a little bit of notes about like what i'm doing what they're doing that sort of stuff yeah. all right and this is my plan for i'm going to write a bunch of these for a bunch of different types of questions um but yeah self-study of what you're doing super valuable self-studying your process super valuable okay just wanted to like show that off a little bit but also for a specific reason Mm -hmm. um, so self-study of process. And one thing you could do, I mean, one of the things I do to try and figure this up, stuff about myself is I go watch old videos of me with students. 
right? And I just like from a third party perspective, I'm watching myself work and explain things, and that gives me even more insight to what I'm doing mentally. Um, yeah. So potentially, like, do things, record yourself, like, talk out loud about what you're doing, if you can force yourself mm -hmm. to, right? And then watch that on video and kind of deconstruct your process. Um, give me one second. You. Sorry, I just need to get something out of the fridge. Okay. I'm trying to think of what else maybe we could cover that would be beneficial that isn't just us jumping into questions. Yeah. I tried to, um, so, so I'm trying to do something so maybe similar to what you're describing. So I'm keeping all of these old notes for yeah. seeing how I set up like logic games. So that's maybe a sort of recording. Absolutely. Keeping your notes and rereading re them and trying to reapply them. Definitely a good idea. Yeah. I'm also trying to explain a lot of these like easier questions to other people, like on online forums and stuff. Yeah. I guess. I definitely think that's helpful. Teaching other people yeah. is always helpful in increasing your own understanding. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. And. Have y'all tried pulling together a study group in the Discord? That might be a good idea too. Yeah. Um, I know Julie talk is to one, relatively talk to one of the this. other students, students, but I don't, I don't know, know her actual, well, their actual name. Which student was it? Or which? what was the handle? Um, you you allotted them, them to my uh, reading, reading comprehension approach, approach I think. Um, let me... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So at least, I think at least one person would be open to like meeting over Zoom or something. Yeah, I think that would be good. Um, pulling together a little study group for multiple people, like high scores, just kind of like exchanging thoughts and notes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely valuable. Can you believe that Nuck if you cuck is a girl? <laughs> I always laugh about that. I actually don't even know what that name means. <laughs> So there's an old song by 3-6 Mafia named Nuck If You Buck. Oh. Um, and so she did a little, like, what is it called? Is that a portmanteau? Okay. What's a portmanteau? Anyways, she did it, like, she just combined, like, replaced it with the word cuck, and I find that really funny. <laughs> and I think Nuck means, like, party or get rowdy. I think that was, like, the colloquial meaning. Mm. Uh -huh. But yeah, definitely reach out to people. Just like propose it in the chat. I think Julie would be involved. Maybe Joy, like a few other people. Um, yeah, who 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 are Julia and Joy? They are also on the Discord. They're students. Uh yes, they're also students. Um, I'm not gonna like. I, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> if okay, I say I their can... real name, I'm not gonna say their handle. If I say their handle, I'm not gonna say their real name. Yeah. Okay. But okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, <laughs> I know I can... a lot more real names than other people do, probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, try it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, other things to think about here. We've got sort of like better process for self-studying your own thinking, um, both doing this, like breaking it down via video and trying to like immediately. Mm -hmm. That's another good reason to talk out loud when you do practice. If you record it, right, then you can literally observe your exact thought process an hour and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, try that out. Uh, I think it could be really helpful. <clears throat> also, people generally avoid speaking out loud until they feel like they know what they're talking about. I know that, like, obviously there's a ton of exceptions, but I think... Where was I going with that? I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought completely. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, okay, a lot of different study-based stuff. Do you, do you have any like specific questions just about like what we've talked about so far? Or, like another thing you'd like to discuss? I'm just kind of like run out of steam. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
So um, like in an academic setting, I worked a lot as a TA and I'm wondering whether I could use that in some way, maybe in, in a long-term approach to also like to do some sort of tutoring or to um, like bridge the time before I actually get accepted and then actually enter law school. But right now that probably would be premature because I don't have an official LSAT score on yeah. record yet and that, that I guess nobody would hire me at this point. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been potentially a benefit of taking April, <laughs> like you would have gotten a score and I'm sure it would have been high enough for you to apply to m almost all of the tutoring companies. Yeah. Um, and even if you're like working for Kaplan for a couple months but before the next exam, that's still a bunch of time teaching people. And then you can yeah. just upgrade to a better shop after. <laughs> yeah. But let's say, <laughs> let's say you work as a tutor. Are you then still allowed to retake the LSAT? Does oh. LSAC allow that? Or is it just then you're somehow undesirable as a test taker or you no. have like an unfair advantage? Well, I really, really don't think so. It definitely was not the case back when I took it because I did tutor in between mm -hmm. them. Um, between, because you know, they're three months apart back then. So yeah, um, I doubt it'll be an issue at all. Right, because at the end of the day, like, it's a school for admission to law school. Oh, that was someone walking behind you for a second. I was like, who the fuck just walked behind me? <laughs> I was like, my partner's at work. What the fuck? <laughs> the creepiest thing in the world. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Um... <clears throat> I also lost track. Basically, what I'm wondering about is that I'm trying to bridge this time period between now and law school. I want to yeah. like work for the best possible LSAT score, but I already know right now that there will be a couple of months where we'll have like a bridging time. I think, like, say I send out applications and then I'm just waiting for results. One thing I thought I could do is to teach other people and then maybe even take the test another time again, like with the experience of. Okay. Having taught that to others, but I don't know how the private tutoring market works. I don't know where you can apply, what's important to consider, or um, it's basically like what the just your LSAT are. score, and then they have like an interview, like mock teaching session to make sure you're good at teaching or at least competent, um, mm -hmm. and also test your knowledge to make sure you don't miss out, like actually know things. I would say the vast majority of prep company tutors are just people that took it in the last year. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of baffling sometimes because it's like they charge more than almost anybody else. And yet like it's like 99% or 90% chance the tutor you're going to get is like someone who has no teaching experience and took it like four months ago. Yeah. But <laughs> that's an easy way for those firms to keep like 75% of the income from it. Um, cause recent, you know, test takers don't demand higher salaries. Anyways, dynamics aside, you can definitely get a job at the prep companies if you have a high score and are reasonably competent, um, on video. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you going to do that? Never, ever, ever let yourself get mad at a student. It's wildly inappropriate to get angry at students. Like, it just isn't helpful. Anyways, like, I've heard of tutors that, like, get frustrated or very, like, I don't know, mean about it. And it's just like that mm. uh, army-style training doesn't work outside of the army. <laughs> you know, screaming at people only works when they're literally under your control and can't leave. <laughs> um, anyways, um, it's definitely a good idea. You could definitely do it. Yeah. And yeah. I think you'd be great at it. So go for it. Thanks. Yeah. And if you take June, I mean, you could all take all the way August, October, November, and still be easily within the admission cycle. And so you may feel yeah. like I've been tutoring for two months. I think I can get a 180 now. I want to, I want to up this 172 to 180 or 174 to 180. Yeah. <laughs> That's think essentially actually, what I did. <laughs> yeah. I think this teaching can actually be the most <laughs> enjoyable part of academic life because otherwise, at least what I did, there was so much time where you just spend time by yourself studying like over and over again, or like writing stuff or like reading yeah. texts. Yeah. And um, 
I think I can make myself better as a test taker by explaining stuff to others, but it's also just more enjoyable than just being. Yeah, I agree. Like, like I love region. writing my stuff, like building up my blog and having an actual like contributions potentially to like how students approach things. But it's exhausting and lonely. Like if I didn't have at least an hour or two of tutoring each day, like I don't think I could like work on that every single day the way I do now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely. And one of the other things you can do, and I've seen people do this, is on Reddit, they're just like, I want to form a study group or like, hey, I'm testing mm -hmm. in the 170s and... You know, I just wanted to offer free tutoring because I think that'll help my own score. But you still have a ton of people jump on that, I think. Like, I see those posts once every few weeks from somebody who's, like, just trying to get better or I just got a 170-something, like, I'm willing to tutor for $30 an hour. Stuff like that. Um, yeah. Definitely possible, and you definitely would get responses. Okay. Uh, we talked about so many ideas. Let me make a summary, if that's OK, and yeah. then just see whether there's something that I'm overlooking or. Um... OK, I've been writing down my list on this side, too, so yeah. perfect. OK. So the basic idea is I work, <clears throat> want to work on error prevention. I, my assumption is that I understand the theoretical side of things of the test mm -hmm. pretty well. Yeah. The errors that I keep making, they pertain to the issue of application, like being in the moment and then um, applying existing knowledge in an imperfect way. And that's what I want to work on, like be more consistent as a test taker, more reliable in terms of discipline and focus. Yeah. yeah. Um, things to approach this would be to reread the question stem more thoroughly, specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I work a lot of highlight with highlighting, which works really great for me in reading comp, but maybe in re logical reasoning, I should less highlighting and then more rereading for example, of the conclusion or to just reread parts of the question stem again before the answer choices or be in between answer choices. So that's something I want to work on. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I so, constantly delete my highlights. It's because I don't want them like visually confusing me when I'm doing a new thing. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Sorry. Yeah. I think the highlighting is great to recognize the structure of longer text, but for shorter passages, maybe it can be distracting or it's a crutch that takes up too much time. I would say the way I use it is to help me commit that part to memory, right? I'm like yeah. using it to highlight it in my mind and then I d delete the, yeah, and then I delete the highlight because I feel like I've already got, the, that's just like my, sorry, keep going. Yeah. <clears throat> Then I need to work on recovery. I feel like I have a tendency to exhaust myself and to basically work until I am literally no longer capable of. Yeah. And that's maybe not the best approach. I need to be like energetic enough to do well and just forcing myself to power through everything. It's not the best approach. No, so I should it. take like a day of rest maybe once a week or so. Mm -hmm. I agree. Day of rest. Yeah. I want to save new material. I'm working a lot with reviewing older material. Mm -hmm. I did especially circular games and other miscellaneous or outlier games. I did them a lot because I found them hardest to like deal with spontaneously. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I'm trying to focus on to really review older PTs, to retake them, to really make them perfect and tend to reflect on the mistakes I keep getting. You also suggested making immediate notes, immediate in the moment, uh, maybe a little mini timelines about what I keep doing wrong or where the mistakes are. Yeah, That's something that I haven't done, so that would be new, so that's maybe a good idea for me. Mm -hmm. And maybe do something more interactive, like study groups or this actually is already like, I feel like this helps me a lot because I'm more articulating my thought process and not in my own head all the time. Yeah, talking to other people helps. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the GRE is maybe nice to have that around as like a backup option. But I think there's such a great divergence between like the reading section and the mathematical section that I think it reflects well on my reading skills, but also reflects very poorly on my mathematical skills. <laughs> so uh, I'd rather really just keep that as a as a plan B and like yeah, I I'm, I'm not sure I want to base a whole application on that. Yeah, but definitely something useful to include. OK, let's see. Anything else? 
so I would say that like you know video like recording yourself while you're working yeah self recording yeah self recording and then reviewing and you suggested improving the speed on the 10 earlier questions but since that's already where I keep making these silly mistakes I'd rather not do this advice right now like I'd rather try to improve thoroughness over speed at this point yeah but maybe in maybe. the long term that would be something to focus on yeah maybe in a month or so you're gonna you'll feel yeah. much more comfortable with all of this stuff or it's like gotten you much more comfortable and then speed again can be a focus yeah. um <laughs> Right, and I'm redoing, redoing older materials a lot. So I'm retaking about one older PT a day. Every day. But then, I, but then I'm saving the new ones. Yeah. Or do you think it's too much? Well, that's how I studied for my first LSAT. It's just one Logic Games book and nothing but repetition. Mm. But I would maybe at least crack one of those down to like more of this self-review stuff um so in lieu of doing a pt for one day just focus on all of this self-review stuff um, yeah. yeah okay so self-record note taking well the thing i would always emphasize is that like sheer repetition got me to that 172 but mm. te teaching other people and articulating my own thought process of what got me to the 179. That's <clears throat> interesting. It makes you care about the material for additional reasons, right? You want to be a good teacher. You want to be helping your student. It's not just about helping yourself anymore. It's helping them. And I find that like, that provides extra motivation, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And thank you for, for doing all of this. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, you are paying me. <laughs> but as always, you know, you're a great student to work with. Wow. Well, okay. Um, same time next week. Uh, what the heck just happened? Recording in progress. Sorry, I don't know what happened. My Zoom just like logged me out and then back in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was just saying same time next week. Right, then. All right, and then hit I'll, me up with any yeah. notes during the week, okay? Sure. All right. Thanks. Okay, <laughs> see you soon. Bye. Rec Thank you.